Now I'd like to discuss with you two alternative methods of getting the LoRaN expansions. Well, the first example is as follows. Suppose we have a fraction z squared minus z minus 2. And we'd like to perform a LoRaN expansion centered at point z equals 0, such that it converges at point 3i over 2. Well, the way you proceed whenever you have a fraction with polynomial in denominator is always the same. You should expand this polynomial in the denominator. Well, here you clearly see that it has two roots, z equals 2 and z equals negative 1. And so you expand it like 1 over z minus 2 times z plus 1. And then you split this fraction into a sum of simpler fractions, like 1 over z minus 2 minus 1 over z plus 1. And then you need to add 1 third as a normalization factor. And then once you achieve this simplification, you should try to use a geometric series to expand both of these simplified fractions. Like for example, fraction 1 over z plus 1. Well, it has an obvious geometric expansion like 1 minus z plus z squared and so on. But this expansion, it's a Taylor expansion, has a problem because its simple ratio test tells us that its radius of convergence is 1. So the whole series converges inside the unit disk. But our point, z equals 3i by 2, is positioned outside this disk. So this Taylor series doesn't satisfy our initial conditions. So what should we do? Well, instead of performing a Taylor expansion in positive powers of z, one should try to attempt the expanding the same expression in negative powers of z. Like this. We factor out z and obtain 1 plus 1 over z, expression in the denominator. And again, we may use a geometric series, but this time it will go in negative powers of z. And the ratio test tells us that the region of convergence is defined by the equation modulus of 1 over z is less than 1. That means that z is greater than 1. So now our convergence region is the exterior of the unit disk. And that suits our purpose quite well, because it's precisely where our initial point is positioned. And so the second fraction gives us the expansion in negative powers of z. And here we go. You write down 1 over z, the sum from 0 to plus infinity, negative 1 to the power of n, divided by z to the power of n. Now what shall we do with our first fraction? 1 over z minus 2. Well, let's check if it's possible to expand it in positive powers of z. So we factor out negative 2 and obtain 1 minus z over 2 expression in the denominator. Then we may attempt a geometric expansion, but of course we should keep in mind that the condition of convergence of this expression is that the modulus of z over 2 should be less than 1, which basically gives us uh, the convergence region, the modulus of z is smaller than 2. So this expression had the convergence radius of 2. And this suits again our purpose, because our point, 3i by 2, is inside this region. And as a result, the first fraction is expanded in positive powers of z. And here we go, minus 1 half, the sum of from 0 to plus infinity, z to the power of n divided by 2 to the power of n. And this way we obtain the full run expansion of our initial expression, f of z equals minus 1 6, the sum from 0 to plus infinity, d to the power of n divided by 2 to the power of n, and minus 1 third, the sum from 0 to plus infinity, negative 1 to the power of n, divided by z to the power of n plus 1. And now we are able to describe the n radius of convergence of our Laurent expansion, namely its inner radius is equal to 1 and its outer radius is equal to 2. And this completes our task. And of course not many functions have this suitable algebraic polynomial in denominator. Well, most of the functions are more difficult and more interesting, and in most cases you are not able to recover the full run expansion of this function. However, in complex analysis, the main emphasis is always on the principal part or singular part of the Laurent expansion. And for this, I'd like to give you a second method. So let's consider one more example. f of z equals 1 over sine cubed of z. And the assignment is as follows. We need to find the principal part of the Laurent expansion of this function near point 
z equals pi n, where n is an arbitrary integer. And here we proceed slightly differently. Well, first of all, for simplicity, let's shift our expansion variable. So we introduce new variable epsilon as z equals pi n plus epsilon. So in terms of epsilon, we'll build a Laurent expansion centered at the origin. Now we plug in this change into our initial function and simplify the fraction sine cubed of pi n plus epsilon is simply negative 1 to the power of n divided by sine cubed of epsilon. And the next step is the expansion of the sine function in Taylor series. Sine of epsilon equals epsilon minus epsilon cubed over 3 factorial plus epsilon to the fifth over 5 factorial and so on. And there is always a question how many terms to keep in this Taylor expansion. Well, with time, after you've done some exercises, you will develop an intuition. Remember that we need only the principal part of the Laurent expansion, the singular one. So let's try to keep the first two terms in this Taylor series. And then we plug this expansion instead of our sine function in the denominator. So what we obtain is as follows. Negative 1 to the power of n over epsilon minus epsilon cubed over 6 cubed. And the way we proceed further, we always factor out the leading term in the braces. Here it's obviously epsilon term. So we factor it out and obtain epsilon cubed time 1 minus epsilon squared over 6 cubed. Now we simply use the binomial expansion for this fraction. Indeed, 1 plus x to the power of alpha is equal to 1 plus alpha x and plus so on. In our case, alpha is equal to negative 3 and x equals minus epsilon squared over 6. And for this fraction, we obtain 1 minus 3 times minus epsilon squared over 6. And as a result, we obtain the following expansion, negative 1 to the power of n, 1 over epsilon cubed, plus 1 over 2 epsilon, plus and so on. Well, the next terms are obviously regular and epsilon, so they are of no interest to us, and, but this, what we obtained, is precisely the singular part or the principal part of our Laurent expansion, because both of these terms are singular. And in the end, we return to our initial variable z to obtain the final answer which is as follows. And now a legitimate question is what would be the region of validity of this expansion? Well, as you remember from the very derivation of the Laurent expansion, the validity is restricted by the nearest possible singularity to the expansion point. In our case, the expansion point was the zero of our sine function, which was a singular point of function f of z. The closest singular point of this function would be the adjacent zero of our sine function, which is positioned right at the distance pi. So our region of validity of this expansion would be a disk standard at the expansion point with radius pi. And this completes our discussion of the third method of Laurent expansions. I hope you got the general idea and good luck with your homework exercises.